Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're gonna to be turning this old office PC into a $350 gaming PC. There's gonna be a little bit of modding involved, but don't worry, we'll walk you through each step of the way to make a really awesome gaming PC. But before we get into that, let's hear a word from everyone's favorite sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Are you guys tired of really cartoony looking games and want something just more realistic and epic looking? Well, today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, might be the perfect game for you. Someone say Raid Shadow Legends? Raid Shadow Legend is actually a free-to-play game that you could download right now on your mobile device or even your desktop or your gaming PC, which you're probably building right now. Raid Shadow Legends is a very exciting game, and sometimes I get tired of the video editing grind, and I load up Raid Shadow Legends on my office PC in there, and you know, a few hours go by, and well, I haven't done anything productive. And what's really exciting is the daily login rewards program for new players. It has actually been doubled from 90 to 180 days. Each day you can claim your free rewards from energy refills, silver and gems to shards and a free barbarian legend champion. So what are you guys waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and if you are a new player, you will get access to 100,000 free silver plus a free champion grumbler. Act quickly, you guys only have 30 days to get access to this really awesome deal and all this treasure that you see on screen right now will be yours. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the actual video, shall we? So before we talk about what exactly we're going to be doing to this lovely PC right here, let's we'll tell you a little bit about it. You can get one of these off of eBay for around $100. This is a Dell Inspiron 3847. It has an Intel 4460 in it, which is an i5. It's just a quad-core processor, nothing too crazy, but it does pair with a Ryzen 1200 if you want a real new world you know, comparison. And it also has eight gigs of RAM that come with it. You have your motherboard. This is a fully working computer that you really could just use this case and you know, use the upgrades that we're gonna do, but instead we're gonna make it look really baller with what Matt's gonna talk about. Now we'll talk about more about the specs with this computer in just a moment, but basically this is a computer we use for our Minecraft server video. If you haven't seen that, hit the eye on the top right corner. We basically took it apart. We're using the same power supply in the same case, and the main reason we're doing that is because the power supply is really cheap, and the case is really budget friendly and comes with RGB fans. So we really want to turn this into a really nice looking gaming PC, because we all know you can upgrade a pre-built and add a graphics card and have it be a gaming PC, but we want it to look the part too. So how about we go ahead and talk about the upgrades we're gonna make. So the biggest part of the upgrade that we're gonna be doing is adding this GeForce GTX 1650. This is the XLR8 version. It's kind of an oddball one from PNY that we've never used before, but it's a really small card, so that might be important for people wanting to throw it straight into this case. But it also doesn't require external power. 1650, one of the best cards you can get that doesn't require external power, which this power supply that we got happens to not have that, which we didn't know. Uh, the power supply is in a PV of 450 watt power supply has no actual external power for this graphics card, no eight pin, no six pin. It just has your basic 24 pin and the CPU and then Molex. So you could buy adapters if you wanted to. We wanted to make this as clean as simple as possible. A data 240 gig SSD. They're about $35 right now with SSDs and hard drives and everything being a little bit more expensive at the moment. And it's all going inside of this Raid Max Neon RGB gaming case, which is right around $60 right now, which is also a really good deal for a case that comes with three RGB fans that are fully programmable in the front and ready to go. There's also a quick mod that we're going to run you guys through real quick. It's really easy, it's not super hard to do. You could use a soldering iron if you want to be professional or you can do it without a soldering iron as well if you, if you want to do the easy way. So we're gonna show you how to do that once we get into this build. So as you guys can see, this is the front panel connector and it has some weird doodads on it. So we actually have these two black wires that are basically being jumped. As you can see, it goes, you know, pin one and then all the way to pin four. Um, and the reason that they do this is we could not tell you. For some reason though, the computer does not work without it. And we can't tell you why, it's just maybe it's one of those things where they don't want you putting it in another case, or it was some type of thing where they needed a workaround for this OEM motherboard to work. Long story short though, we found out it does not work without having these pins jumped. So you could find certain ways to jump these pins on the motherboard yourself if you really wanted to. 
it's actually this connection right here. You could even um, connect everything as you normally would and then jump the pins yourself with some custom connectors that look like these, just the standard ones that come with the case, which we may end up doing that. Or the other option that we did the last time we had one of these is we basically, we only need the brown and we need the blue. That's the power switch, but you need to have these connections still jumped. So what we ended up doing was actually de-pinning each one of these. You just take a really, really small flathead and you press the little plastic tabs down and these pull out and then you take your new case and you take the pins from that and put them in its place. So, and, and it's just like a standard layout pretty much. Um, you still have your, you have a power switch, you have a power LED and you have a hard drive LED. That's what every single one of these wires is and that's it. There's no reset or anything like that. So it's not hard to do, um, but if you don't wanna have to do any soldering, there's some other workarounds for it, which if we can think of anything, we'll let you guys know. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and do that mod real quick. We'll go back to our time lapse and put together this nice little gaming office PC. All right guys, so as you can see, we have de-pinned each one of these connections and look at that, it's on the RAID Max case now. We actually have everything wired up to the power switch, the power LED and the hard drive LED. All that is now hooked up to our OEM Dell um, front panel connector. So as long as we did all this right, this should work. As you can see, we have everything jumped the same. Obviously these connections don't have colors, so make sure that you take a picture of this when you take it off so that you know which pin goes to where. But it's really easy just to look right down in here if you can get that camera angle. You can see the brown and the blue, or the purple and blue, is the power switch. The two below it, the red and white, is the power LED. And then the black and the yellow is the hard drive LED and, and in that exact order. So as long as you take a picture and remember which connection goes to what, this is actually a really easy process. You don't have to solder it. You could use hot glue, you could use super glue, and you could also just use tape. These connections don't carry electrical um, currents with them. So really it, it's not like a super vital thing. Just make sure that you don't straight have bare wire hanging around the case because that just never looks good. But other than that though, this should be ready to throw into this case. Let's do it. Right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this office PC turned into a gaming PC, let's talk about those benchmarks real quick. Now, we did only test a couple of titles, those games being CSGO, Fortnite, and Overwatch. These are three games that we think this PC is going to thrive on, and we don't want to exclude the fact that this system is probably not ideal for higher-end new AAA titles, because you are going to be running at probably 1080p low settings, with that i5 being a slight bottleneck in some of those games, so do keep that in mind, but if you are going to be playing primarily esports titles like CSGO, Fortnite, Overwatch, or even Valorant, which is a game we're going to be adding to our benchmark rotation once it officially comes out of beta, so let us know down below if you're interested in seeing a dedicated video on that. We'd be happy to do so. Uh, you're going to see really awesome results with these types of games. 
First up, with everyone's favorite CSGO, we are getting well over 100 FPS, not dipping below 60 most of the time, uh, playing a deathmatch game on Dust 2. CSGO is a very easy game to run, let's be honest here, but it does show that you can get really awesome pro setting level performance with this little office PC that probably would end up in a recycling plant and not used for any other purpose. So if you can ever get your hands on anything like these Dell Inspirons or Dell Optiplexes or any of these other Dell machines that come with second or third gen Intel processors, definitely, definitely if you can repurpose them for somebody because there's somebody out there who would want a really cheap computer and you can make a really nice little gaming rig for somebody's first gaming PC out of these pre-built towers. We do it all the time. Whenever we get our hands on them, we always like to either upgrade it with a graphics card or swap it into a new case and help somebody out in need who really wants to get a gaming PC on a tight budget. The same goes for games like Fortnite. On pro settings, which is basically epic view distance and everything else on low, we are getting well over 60 FPS. But Fortnite did pretty well overall. One thing you could do is lock the frame rate to 60 FPS to limit stutters, but that's just something to consider. Unless you want to play on a high refresh rate monitor for some reason with this budget PC, you should probably do that in the first place because you're probably playing on a 1080p 60Hz monitor with a budget PC anyways. And the last game we tested was Overwatch. On medium settings, we had absolutely no issues running this game at well over 60 FPS as well. Again, another popular esports title that has no problems running on this PC. We highly suggest considering this configuration. We've noticed that there are a lot of these Dell Inspirons on eBay, and they're a lot cheaper than most of the other options that are out there on the market, like other Dell Optiplexes. So if you are somebody who's been looking to get a pre-built system to upgrade, keep an eye out for these guys. Paying around $100 for one is a pretty good market value, and if you are willing to tinker a little bit and do the modding required to get the front panel connector to work, then you might have yourself a really awesome value for money gaming PC for whatever your needs might be. So now that we have the benchmarking out of the way, how about we go ahead and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. Okay guys, so you just saw us benchmarking this PC and for $350, you honestly really can't do much better than this. The case swap was not too difficult. You did have to do a little bit of modding with that front panel connector, Dell just being Dell, you know, not wanting you to case swap. But I think this actually ended up pretty well though. This case is really nice for the money. Yeah, it's a little bit cheaper build quality, but it comes with that RGB that you want. I mean, it's pretty easy to build in. So highly suggest this case and power supply combo if you are doing a case swap. It's pretty much a no brainer for the amount of value you're getting out of it. And if you're somebody who likes to take old systems like this and keep them out of recycling and actually put them to good use, for people who need gaming PCs, this is a big thumbs up. We highly recommend it. And we hope you check the links down below if you wanna do something like this and purchase stuff from us using our affiliate links because yeah, helps us. Another thing to keep in mind too is remember that doing the case swap is really unnecessary. I mean, we did get some better airflow out of this. We got way better looks out of it and it honestly looks like a fully functional gaming PC, but you can still get the 1650. You can still get the SSD and honestly just keep it in this case because you don't need external power or anything. So this power supply is actually enough to power the system with the 1650. And this case does have the expansion room for it with the PCI brackets in the back. So if you wanted to save, you know, almost a hundred ish dollars, then you could just not upgrade the power supply and not upgrade the case and just keep everything in this bad boy. But you know what, we like RGB, so that's the main reason why we did this tutorial. And we hope you guys enjoyed how this thing turned out. We're pretty impressed with it, and uh, we look forward to doing more of these in the future, because we got a lot of computers we might do this to soon. So if you guys wanna ask any questions about doing the specific thing, or maybe bug Matt and I a thousand times on how to change that little uh, front panel connector, you can follow us over on twitch.tv slash toastybros right down there, and just tune into our streams to see some really awesome stuff, and even computer builds live, which is pretty freaking cool. It's some behind the scenes stuff right there. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Goodbye. Adios. Adios.